original models probably cost something in the order of 10 or so million to train. The recent models were costing around about $100 million. The next generation of models that we haven't seen yet, but they're looking at, and this is why these guys are raising such uh, considerable sums, is just looking at is they're spending potentially a billion dollars or more to train. Just from a sort of big picture, you know, what's going on in the world of, of AI and investment? There's a huge pile of money flowing in. Um, AI funding in the second quarter took 35% of all VC investments, so significant. $24 billion poured into AI-related investments. Um, so I think you know, certainly investors are super interested. We're seeing um, from a just from a general innovation point of view, of course, that's a big concentration of resources. Now, is that market saturated or not? You know, we can all argue that. Um, but the, certainly the fund is booming. When will the payoffs come? You know, who knows? As we said, there's lots of horizons here at work, but there's certainly lots of capital flowing in. And who's getting the capital? Obviously, OpenAI is just is dominating in terms of investment, but there's a whole lots of other companies that are getting significant investment. You know, big guys like uh, Databricks and Anthropic are getting you know, big players, but also then lots of other companies getting, getting hundreds of millions of dollars. So there's a lot of capital coming into space here. Also, though, I think what's interesting is, is think about the companies and the value of employees. Um, with so much money pouring in, it's also what's the value of an AI employee? And some of these companies we're seeing, like, for example, at Sakana, and we'll talk more about what this company does later on, but you're, you know, their, their valuation would put the value per employee is something like $66 million. Um, and we're seeing there's a concept of uh, reverse aqua hires where people are leaving companies like Google, starting up companies that aren't doing very much of anything, but are getting bought back at ridiculous sums. But part of that is because their expertise is in such short supply. But I, what we'll talk about is, you know, while sort of price tags for this kind of, this sort of the very most experienced and expert talent is probably out of the price ranges of most of our organizations, all of us can be taking action and learning and, and working with these tools. And that's, uh, we don't need to spend those sums to actually be able to take great advantage of, of technologies. Just another way to sort of take a look at the state of the market, um, CB Insights published a list of the 100 most interesting startups. And I would certainly, you could, you could have long discussions about what they use to make that list, what fits in or not. But I think what's interesting just about that list is the number of countries um, that are popping up there already. Um, you know, usual suspects uh -huh. like, U.S., China, U.K., Germany, France, but also South Africa, Israel, Spain, Netherlands, Canada, Switzerland, South Korea, India, Czech Republic, uh, Japan, all make this list. So this is sort of the nature of AI. And if we looked at the same kind of list two years ago, there was the, the number of countries was smaller. So it's, we're seeing spread of interest. Um, and the kinds of applications are going from general broad-based applications to more focused industry types of applications as well. But with this too, the industry is the sort of the, the capacity of these models is scaling up. And again, not this discussion, we could have long discussions about what that really means in terms of, of, of power. But there's an, if you look at the curve growing, it's essentially a, we're on an exponential growth curve here of models that are um, larger models with more parameters, meaning they can do process more information, also more capable, more complex models that can do different kinds of tasks in combination. So this is, we're definitely, not at the anywhere sort of an apex or a tailoring off where it's still very much in, in high growth and development gear here. And even things like the idea of, of scaling is changing. So there's an idea of like more powerful models being able to process more data, but we're seeing in some of the things, just there's a new model recently released from OpenAI where they're introducing a concept of the sort of inference computing. And this is important because it's, it's really a sort of a form of reasoning going on and checking. And so you're finding that actually in the process of taking time for the machine to give it time to think, that in fact, it, they're ultimately improving the outcomes from the data. So the notion of how they're, how to manage and evaluate changes is changing.